good morning, good morning. Welcome to another session at Elizabeth Ann Ministries. I trust that all is well with you, and if it's not, I decree and declare that it will be well. In Jesus' name, the Word of God says that we shall decree a thing and it shall be established. So whatever you may be going through this morning, we ask God to fix it. In Jesus' name, we lay it at his feet. Glory be to God. And I pray for those who are very well. And um, I ask you to continue to pray for myself, I'm Elizabeth Ann, and the ministry, and that God's will be done concerning it. In Jesus' name, amen. We praise him for another day that we're in the land of the living and that we are alive today. And so we are honored to be here. Glory be to God. The scripture message is taken today from 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 4, and then verse 8. First of all, then, I urge that petitions, specific requests, prayers, intercessions, prayers for others, and thanksgiving be offered on behalf of all people for kings and all who are in positions of high authority, so that we may live a peaceful and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This kind of praying is good and acceptable and pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who wishes all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge and recognition of the divine truth. Verse 8 tells us, Therefore, I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger and disputing or quarreling or doubt in their minds. So this is telling us we need to pray for those who God has sent to cover us in every area. We have persons not only in the body of Christ as church leaders, as small group leaders. We have the deacons, the fivefold ministry gifts that are operating in the church and the Lord has sent to perfect us, to help us to grow and mature. We have uh, bishops and those that are overseers in different jurisdictions, different areas, more than one place or country. It's a lot to bear. We have leaders in uh, the government, presidents, vice presidents, prime ministers, kings, queens, yes, even dictators, my God. We have leaders on the job in the business arena where uh, we have supervisors, principals, um, administrators, mayors, senators, members of parliament, in all different capacities, we have leaders. And so we need to pray for them so that they will be encouraged to continue going forward, um, that they will be um, led to make right choices and decisions so that we can truly live peaceful lives so that Laws can be created in a fair view. And, you know, sometimes we can't please everyone. We cannot. And so there will be uh, persons who will not agree with decisions of our leaders. And that's why God say pray. You know, um, if you've never been a president or prime minister or vice president or if you've never been in a leadership position, it is a difficult one and it requires support and help. It requires uh, the spirit of understanding, and it requires the unity of a mindset and a heart that will truly take on the vision of that nation or that ministry or that particular business to get things carried out in a team manner, in Jesus' name. I want to um, read a story pertaining to Moses in the Bible, and Moses is one of the considered one of the meekest men, but yet he had to lead so many people. He had to deal with so many attitudes. 
and he was responsible for the call of God on his life to lead the children of Israel. In Exodus 17, and I'm beginning from verse 8, Then Amalek and his people came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose men for us and go out and fight against Amalek and his people. And tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. And so Joshua did as Moses said and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the hilltop. Now when Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And when he lowered his hand, due to fatigue, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy and he grew tired. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And then Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and one on the other side. And so it was that his hands were steady until the sun set. And so Joshua overwhelmed and defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Now in this story we see where Joshua did the physical fighting. But Moses, Aaron, and Hur were responsible for the spiritual aspect of it. Moses being the leader prayed and interceded. But he needed help. He needed support. And so her and Aaron stood on each side to hold his hands up to support him. It says that when Moses got weak and his hands were tied and he put them down and he dropped them, um, they were being defeated. But as long as his hands were up and he was praying and seeking God for victory, they were winning. In every aspect of a team, we need prayers. Regardless of those who believe it or not, um, can receive it or not, we need to encounter God in our lives. We want Father God to be involved in it and to deal with our affairs and help us and lead us because he knows all, he sees all, he hears all. Amen. And I can tell you leaders deal with different attitudes, different people, different types of people, and um, it's not easy leading a set of people, especially if they're not on one accord with the vision of the place or the initial um, business or ministry that they're in charge of. And so the Lord said to me, I need you to pray for leaders, especially those in the house of God, because they go out and they have to deal with planning. They have to spend time seeking God. They have to oversee a lot of stuff. They have to travel sometimes. They have to balance out their family affairs and deal with the ministry church affairs. And they're spending time seeking God. It requires their time and effort and their obedience. And so sometimes they feel weary because they've been trying. And sometimes we have persons who are just unkind, who are difficult people, um, and those persons who come in, they have to counsel. Um, they also have to deal with pressure from certain persons who want their attention more than the usual. And so these are things they have to go through, especially those who are leading a nation and leading a ministry and leading their family. Yes, we have some of those. And so we need to pray for them. We need to encourage them. Sometimes they're dwelling on an issue or situation within the ministry, and um, it gets hard, and they want to give up. And we don't want them to give up, especially if God has called them to cover us, to lead us, guide us, teach us, um, impart unto us. Uh, we want to make sure that they're on the right journey in the right lane and putting their hands on what God has equipped them to succeed in and assist and help in building the kingdom of God. Amen? So we want to cover them today. We want to pray for them. And I want to encourage you to continue to pray. Ask God what it is that you need to pray about concerning your spiritual leader or your pastor or your bishop or whatever capacity, even on the job, 
You know, sometimes we're on assignment on our job as uh, members of the body of Christ. And um, we need to be in place. And so ask God, what is it that I need to do? How can I assist? How can I help? You know, we have members sometimes who are just pew warmers. Yes, they may pay tithe and so. But that's it. And they stay there and they don't grow. We want to be able to grow and build and increase and expand and move forward and go on a higher level in God. Amen. We need to do our part in lifting up our leaders in prayer and any seating for them, um, for their families. Whether it's a man or a woman, you know, the spouses go through as well. So we need to pray that they are encouraged because they have to be uh, supportive in place um, in the name of Jesus concerning the ministry of God. And so I give God praise for just saying, let's focus for highlighting the needs and us hearing, because sometimes we don't hear when God is trying to nudge us to say, listen, I need you to do this. And we can be a blessing to them um, if we would just listen to the Holy Spirit and let him direct us. Sometimes the decisions that they make are not pleasing to the team, and they become divisive. And um, instead of going through the right channels, they go outside and they cause disruption. We pray against that in the name of Jesus. And we pray for unity in Jesus' name. Some of our leaders are going through divorce. Some of our leaders are going through separation. Some of our leaders are going through financial situations and they need help. Marriages are in trouble. The home front is in trouble. Let's continue to keep them going, keep them covered. And guess what? They are still human. They are human like you and I. And, you know, as parents, sometimes our children have activities um, that's not just the norm. We have to deal with that. They have to deal with that and the church business. So let's pray for them. Let's cover them. Let's keep them together that God would strengthen them in their inner core and that their passion for the ministry will continue to burn and be reignited when it starts to die down. Um, let's push them forward in prayer and encourage them, give them a good word, a word that can keep them going and make them feel good, you know, and, and mean that word, mean that word from your heart. Be steadfast and remain on course, we decree and declare for them today, um, that they stay humble and function in the grace God has called them to function in and stay in that lane, and that God also um, keep them together financially um, and physically in the name of Jesus. May the joy of the Lord be fueled within them in Jesus' name as they walk and be obedient. And we give God praise for them because they didn't have to answer the call. They could say, oh, I don't want to be bothered. But we thank God for those who have accepted the call, those who have been in it for decades and years. We give God praise. Those who have deposited and continue to deposit, we thank God. And we pray for those that are on the verge of completing their word and work and going on um, to heaven to receive and rest from the work. We give God praise. We pray for the families in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, as a teacher and an aftercare worker, um, I had a lot to deal with. And sometimes we go beyond the call of duty. We have children who come in, they have issues, um, especially those who don't really go to church. Um, I had so many answers and so many requests. I had a child that came to me one time and asked me, can you pray for my daddy to be saved? I had someone who said, I don't know how to pray. Um, there are some who says, I feel neglected at home. My parents are always out or they're working and they're trying to create a family environment and keep the home running and so forth. There were parents that were, um, there were issues where they, you know, fought over the children. The children stayed here for a time with one parent and then stayed to the other parent and it was difficult. And so the children go through a lot as well. So preachers, kids need help as well. Um, let's pray for them. And, um, I had a lot in dealing with that, and sometimes I would go home and the Lord would drop a child's name in the middle of the night, wake me up and say, pray for this person, pray for the family. You find out a lot through the children, 
And so we have to be confidential in those areas, but they need help. And so the Lord can use you like that. I, I know many teachers, many persons in that field, in the profession, and those who deal with children, they have um, discovered issues in the family just through the children talking. And um, some children are fearful. And so we pray that um, we be aware and alert um, and we hear and we pray and um, we do our part in Jesus' name. So let's cover our leaders. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you. We thank you for this message. We pray, Father God, that there's an awakening in the body of Christ. And for those who can hear, not only those who are saved, but those who may pass this way to hear this message who are not saved, but still need to hear this word. We need to learn how to speak, Father God, to our leaders and respect them, Father. Help us, help, help us to say the right things, Father God. Be a doorkeeper at our lips, Father God. Help us, Lord God, not to tear down, but to build, to encourage, to inspire. Help us, Father God, to um, reach out and do our part. Help us to hear you when you give us instructions concerning our leaders and those in authority, those you sent to God over our souls and watch over our souls. We pray for those who feel like giving up, those who feel um, betrayed lots of times. Father God, those who feel weary, those who are doing more than their share, we call for others to come in and do their part and lend their hand. We pray for those who've been slothful to arise and put their hands to the plow and start doing what they're supposed to do in the name of Jesus. We cover leaders in every aspect, Father God. We decree and declare, Lord God, order divine alignment in the name of Jesus in the body of Christ and in the business world and in our community and those around us, Father God. We pray for our government leaders. We pray, Father God, that they make the right choices, that legislation and laws are put in place that would be fair. And we pray for those that are disgruntled who do not understand why things have to be, that they will learn how to settle. We pray against the complainers and those who complain all the time and never contribute to building and helping. Father God, we bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Lord God, to strengthen our leaders and encourage them today. Inspire them with new fresh fire. Let them be rejuvenated today. We decree and declare fresh your fresh breath over them, Lord God, the Ruach breath of God over them today. And may they be enlightened, Father God. Fresh word, new revelation, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare, keep them safe, protect them, guard over them, watch over their families, their spouses. Heavenly Father, bless them financially, spiritually, mentally, physically. And we pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you hear this prayer. We praise you, we honor you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, unto another time, until another Wednesday, be blessed.